Okay, so this is a short summary of um, uh, updates um, around G-plates and uh, plate modeling. So G-plates um, functionality improvements um, that are underway at the moment uh, and coming in the near future is uh, the first uh, cab off the rank uh, in my short presentation here. Right? Now, one of the things that um, John Cannon is currently working on is uh, implementing um, a view tilt and perspective view functionality um, in G-Plate. So this is um, still a little bit experimental. And so this is what a tilted view um, of a visualized mantle volume that could be seismic tomography or the output of a mantle convection model would look like. Uh, this is not yet working for rasters or filled uh, polygons. So the way it works, one would drag the mouse to tilt the view um, and to um, uh, and move from the standard 3D orthographic view uh, to the perspective view. So here's uh, um, uh, a, a perspective view that is um, a little different from the previous view. So, so this is how the eyes would see um, uh, a perspective. So distant objects would appear smaller. Um, this is also not yet working for rasters or filled polygons. Now there's quite a few build system improvements uh, that are um, underway. Now for G-Plates, we've been use we've been using the old uh, CMake uh, for 10 years. Uh, now there's a modern version that is much better at managing dependency libraries, uh, supporting new compilers, uh, C++ standards, uh, uh, etc. And Q, uh, the, our graphics library Qt um, is now uh, moving uh, towards Qt5, and support of Qt5 is especially needed for modern Linux uh, platforms, which no longer uh, support QT4, which is what we've been using. Um, so this is all um, uh, happening behind the scenes to improve G-Plate. Um, uh, similarly, um, um, Apple computers um, uh, in, in particular um, require uh, now the um, open uh, graphics library, OpenGL3 core. Um, unfortunately, that is not backward compatible um, with the old OpenGL1 that, uh, and 2 that has been used uh, in many places in G-Plate. So we are now being forced to upgrade our entire graphics um, engine. And uh, the only good news is that OpenGL3 will enable us to implement better symbology, something that users have called for um, for a long time. G-Plates 2.3 is the next version, and that will also um, be able to make use of all available uh, res resolution um, on uh, high resolution displays, such as the Apple uh, Retina displays. I've briefly mentioned symbology um, before. Um, and we have had um, uh, many requests over the years, especially for subduction teeth, and uh, they are now uh, finally coming. Um, along with uh, other uh, more elaborate symbols for points, line patterns, fill patterns, um, etc. And so this would be um, quite a substantial uh, improvement for G-Plates in terms of uh, um, being able to visualize plate reconstructions um, the way we're used to looking at them on maps with the relevant symbols for plate boundaries and other points. PyG plates on macOS is now finally signed with a valid developer certificate and notarized by Apple. And so this is quite important uh, to uh, reduce hassles that uh, users have and users have in installing um, PyG plates on their uh, Apple machines. Currently, um, uh, we're exposing uh, G, uh, G plate's ability to do uh, crustal thinning and uh, adding the ability for, to model tectonic subsidence in Pi G plates. So, this is all um, underway and, of course, particularly important um, for uh, basin modeling and uh, linking the outputs of uh, deforming plate models uh, from G plates to create maps of isostatic topography through uh, time in the regions where either crustal thinning or crustal thickening um, is taking place. 
so when it comes to the subsidence of basins, of course, we have um, a syn rift um, uh, subsidence due to stretching and then pulse drift subsidence due to cooling. Um, um, both of these uh, processes will now be captured in, uh, in G plates as soon as this functionality is fully implemented. I'm sure some of you um, know about the G plates forum. Um, so it's our online vehicle um, to engage uh, G plates users to ask questions, get notified of new releases. And um, that forum is called discourse.gplates.org. And I've here added a short, a small snapshot of uh, the G plates discourse usage over the last quarter. Um, uh, you can see there's quite a lot of activity. Uh, uh, one of the things that, that I found curious that we have, uh, in addition to logged in users, anonymous users and crawlers. Now, uh, perhaps there's someone in the audience who can explain to me exactly what differentiates a crawler from an anonymous user. Uh, recently, we've also added um, a globe uh, to our um, GPlace portal that's quite useful um, for Basin Genesis Hub purposes. It's uh, a lithology globe that is based on the GLIM uh, 1.0 model and is published by the Commission for the Geological Map of the World. So a digital data set um, for this map is available and all the lithologies um, um, listed on the right hand side um, are visualized overlaying over a digital elevation model um, that, uh, that can be uh, scaled appropriately by the user. So for example, if one wanted to um, uh, set up a badlands model um, that, is, that is driven um, by uh, different erodibilities associated with different lithologies, uh, the lithology globe um, would, would be a, a first go-to point to have a look what the different lithologies are that are currently exposed uh, in your area of interest and gives you an idea um, for how to proceed. Um, by pure accident, I ran across this um, wonderful um, website called the World Building Pasta, where you, where you uh, find a very elaborate tutorial on how to use G plates for uh, beginners uh, that was created in the middle of last year. And uh, I looked at this and I was quite impressed. There's, there's it's quite a long list of, of uh, explaining how to build a plate model from scratch, um, uh, starting with the basics, um, you know, generating rotations, uh, generating plate boundaries and ocean crust uh, through isochrons. Um, and it, it's a fantastic uh, example of how the community uh, uh, can be engaged and software, in fact, uh, does take on um, a life of its own to some extent, uh, with tutorials being put together that we don't even uh, know about until we discover them. So for all those g -place enthusiasts amongst you, I highly recommend uh, uh, subscribing to World Building Pasta. Uh, the last um, um, few slides of my update uh, relate to the recently um, published um, um, plate model by Andrew Murdith and others. Um, then that's now out in Earth Science Reviews. And that's the first um, topological plate reconstruction with um, moving boundaries uh, through time uh, from a billion years ago to the present. And so it starts um, before the assembly of Rodinia, um, where the world looked really pretty different from today um, and uh, moves all the way to the, to the present. And here's um, uh, the paper in Earth Science Reviews. Um, here's a snapshot 500 million years ago after uh, the Rodinia breakup. And, uh, and here's a small set of globes and that uh, illustrates um, the evolution uh, of uh, Earth's tectonic plates um, from a billion years ago uh, towards the assembly of uh, Rodinia um, around um, uh, 900 million years ago and then uh, followed by disintegration and later the assembly of Pangaea. And so this um, animation um, uh, is on the Earth by the YouTube channel, and it was, was uh, has gone completely viral on Twitter a few uh, days ago. I think it was reposted about 2,400 times and has nearly 6,000 6, likes or something like that. Yeah. And so it's uh, it's clearly uh, been quite uh, popular, and it will form uh, the basis for future deep time 
um, analysis of the connection between tectonic plates and the mantle as well as surface processes. Thank you. <laughs>